years, then we haven't even copyrighted our material. We allow people to copy it, to give it away. That's what we want. Why don't we see these fossil kangaroos all the way from Mount Ararat, where the ark landed, all the way to Australia? How did kangaroos even get to Australia? The answer will shock you. I'm just kidding. They don't have an answer. Welcome to Apologia, where a former Christian takes a look at the claims of Christians. Today we're going to talk about kangaroos, almost entirely so that we can look at this clip again. That never gets old. Where did kangaroos come from, oh, Eric? I, I know what most people think. Australia. Australia. Australia, mate. But that would be incorrect. Definitely incorrect. We know that all the animals came after creation. They came from God, but then later they came from the Middle East in the ark and they spread to the rest of the world according to the Bible. If one is to take the story of Noah's ark literally, in the way Eric does, one would need to accept the idea that every animal in the world was congregated in one spot. But then many species somehow ended up exclusively in far-flung places. Be they lemurs of Madagascar, the kiwi of New Zealand, the devil of Tasmania, or the unofficial mascot of Australia, the kangaroo. What we don't see is we don't see a sort of set of uh, kangaroo fossils going from Ararat all the way to Australia. But right. It's a bit of a mystery to say the least. I remember Ken Ham saying, uh, you know, well, hey, how did the kangaroos get to Australia? And he said, no, that's easy. They hopped. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Eric, that wasn't Ken Ham. That was your dad. People say, how did the kangaroos get to Australia? Uh, they hopped. That's how they get everywhere. Perhaps a psychologist might have something to say about mixing up those two men. But I do remember well what Ken Ham said about this kangaroo question. According to answers in Genesis, many of them could have floated on vast floating logs. I remember it because I first read it in his answers book when I was still a Christian and desperately looking for scientific validation of young earth creation and the flood. Really? I thought. The first answer given is that a couple of kangaroos grabbed onto some logs and floated to Australia? The absurdity of this answer was one factor that sent me looking to see what the secular sources had to say. Of course, this isn't the strangest creation hypothesis for this kangaroo question. Jade West points out that up until 2016, the Conservapedia suggested that volcanoes in the Mount Ararat region were able to transport the smaller animals over greater distances than the animals could get by just walking. Yes, they suggested kangaroos caught an 11,000 kilometer ride to Australia on flying lava. But we're here to take a look at the Creation Today claims. Eric? Why are kangaroos and koalas only found in Australia and nowhere else? What's uh, it's a good question. How come we find some animals in specific geographic locations and they're not really anywhere else? Of course, evolutionists would use this to say, obviously, uh, this animal evolved and that's where it evolved. And so it's geographically isolated because of evolution taking yes. place. That sounds reasonable. There is an entire scientific field called biogeography. Biogeography is the study of, you know, the spatial and temporal distribution of plants and animals. Basically, it's interested in where living things are, why, and when. Here's the Alfred Wegener example I promised. Basically, he used biogeography to uh, fit the continents back together. He looked at, you know, the, the locations of Syogonysis in both Africa and South America, and he knew that if, if these two pieces of land uh, had been together, that would explain why you could find fossils of that species in both places. What do they say about kangaroos and other marsupials? Why are there so many marsupials in Australia? There are about 334 species of living marsupials with 14 species in North America, 86 species in South America, but a whopping 234 species of marsupials in Australia. The earliest marsupials are known in China during the early Cretaceous. Eutherian or placental mammals had yet to arrive. During the early to middle uh, Cretaceous, marsupials found themselves on every continent. However, by the time the late uh, Cretaceous rolled around, a number of continents had drifted away from each other. This made it difficult for the late arriving placental mammals to get to all of these continents. Hence, Australia basically only contained marsupial mammals, which had colonized the continent from before the late Cretaceous. This isolation led to the success of marsupials on Australia, into the mammals that we love today, such as kangaroos and koalas and wombats. Evolution is played out differently when groups become isolated from one another and follow unique trajectories unique to their local geography and history. Okay, that's the view of modern science. Let's get back to Eric. We, we would have to say that we do not have a definitive answer to this question. Uh, I looked through the pages of uh, the Bible and I don't find a definitive answer to um, how kangaroos bounced all the way to uh, Australia. <laughs> well, this is an excellent start. Most scientists get far more excited over topics without a definitive answer than those with a definitive answer. 
Admitting I don't know can be a big hang-up for young Earth creationists, but it's a great place from which to start learning. Because uh, the kangaroo is, surprisingly enough, not mentioned in the Bible. Oh, right. Eric's only source of information is the Bible. It seems unlikely that God is going to add some verses about the kangaroo now. I guess we're stuck in the land of not learning. A scientific model is basically where we're saying, of what we know, how can we explain what the Bible says happened? Yes. That is so not what a scientific model is. A scientific model is a physical, conceptual, or mathematical representation of a real phenomenon that is difficult to observe directly. Scientific models are used to explain and predict the behavior of real objects or systems. So what are the facts? The facts are that uh, the Bible tells us that there, there were kangaroos that there must have been there in the Middle East. The facts are today that marsupials of that type are in Australia. No, no. Marsupials in Australia is a fact. Kangaroos in the Middle East is the claim. In fact, it is the very claim we're attempting to evaluate. You can't start with it as true, or you're just wasting everyone's time. So let's start to explain how uh, one possible model by which they could have gone there. Okay, here we go. One of the things about marsupial mammals is the very, very short gestation period that they have. Kangaroo gestation period is 31 to 36 days. And some of those, like kangaroos for example, have this strange ability that they can be pregnant at different stages at the same time. They I guess this depends a little on your definition of pregnancy. Once a kangaroo mother gives birth, the jelly bean sized baby crawls into the mother's pouch and attaches to a nipple for another 200 or so days of suckling and growing. At that point, the mother can get pregnant again, even if she still has other joeys in her pouch. Not only that, they can actually uh, almost cryogenically suspend an embryo as well for a little while. This is true. It's called embryotic diapause and happens when a viable fertilized zygote doesn't attach to the uterus for a period of time. Along with marsupials, other mammals have this ability, like armadillos and bears. It would certainly add new wrinkles and scenarios in human planned parenthood. So they'd be able to migrate faster than placental mammals. I suppose that not having to stop to raise infants in one spot would be a migration advantage. Though newborn wildebeest can run with the herd five minutes after birth. So mileage definitely varies. They needed to get to Australia before the land bridges, which would have been caused by, uh, you know, after the flood, there would probably be an ice age. There would have been land bridges, lower ocean levels. And maybe the marsupial type mammals managed to migrate further to Australia because of their ability to, uh, the fact that they don't have to uh, have such long gestation periods and not having to hang around bringing up animals, bringing up babies. And that most of the placental mammals would not have been able to get that far before the, um, before the land bridges to Australia closed. And that could be an explanation. Okay, so what Paul has set up here is a hypothetical race between marsupials and all all the rest of the placental mammals. We'll talk about the land bridge concept in a minute, but for now let's accept the premise. How long would it take a focused, dedicated, divinely navigated kangaroo to travel the roughly 12,000 kilometers from Mount Ararat to Australia? Kangaroos can reach top speed of 70 kilometers per hour and can maintain 40 kilometers per hour over two kilometer stretches, but their comfortable hopping speed is more like 20 to 25 kilometers per hour. At the lower speed and maintaining an eight hour hopping day, the ARC pair of kangaroo could have made it from Ararat to Australia in just 74 days, assuming a land route to do so and optimum path and conditions. So, that's quite possible even without needing to account for the reproductive wizardry. Now we know the koalas would have had to have made the same trip in the same time. Their top speed is estimated at 10 km per hour, and they sleep 18 hours a day, and would presumably have needed a little extra time to find their exclusive diet of eucalyptus plants that don't exist along the way. Tricky. So let's plug their trip at an optimum 293 days. There are placental mammals that are faster and could have got there faster, like the cheetah, or the zippy sloth, which could have made the trip in less than 100 days. And a sloth gestation period is 183 days, so they wouldn't have had to make pesky baby stops either. If the koalas could make it, then placentals could definitely have made it. The whole kangaroo pregnancy information was interesting to learn, but ultimately not that explanatory. And the whole idea that there were land bridges ties in perfectly with the creationist worldview of the Ice Age. The creationist worldview of the Ice Age that Eric speaks of is likely that developed by retired meteorologist Michael Ord, who suggested that the conditions of a worldwide flood would have caused an Ice Age 700 years after the flood, accompanied by significant lowering of the sea levels creating land bridges between the continents. But as he spoke about earlier, such models are only as good as the discovery predictions they make. The answer is they walked, because all you need to do in our current climate of global warming concept, you <laughs> lower the water or raise the water, you change the shape of the continents. So you too can go to Google and ask where would the sea be if the water level dropped 100 metres? Wow. Answer, you could walk around the planet from the Shetland Islands to the tip of South America without getting your feet wet for all practical purposes. Wow. So the Aborigines walk, the kangaroos walk. Let's Google that like John asks, finding this site, which did a study on the hypothetical draining of the Earth's oceans. At a 100 metre drop, a few places are exposed, it takes 10 times that, a one kilometer drop, to do the dry foot globe walk that John suggests. 
But the great thing about this land bridge claim is that we don't need the water to actually drop in order to test it. There are sonar equipped vessels traveling these oceans all the time, so we should be able to see these post-flood land bridges. As Bill Nye noted during his debate with Ken Ham, There's a claim that there was a land bridge that allowed these animals to get from Asia all the way to the continent of Australia, and that land bridge has disappeared, has disappeared in the last 4,000 years. No navigator, no diver, no U.S. Navy submarine, no one's ever detected any evidence of this, let alone any fossils of kangaroos. So your expectation is not met. It doesn't seem to hold up. Modern creationist view actually accepts the notion of the Pangaea supercontinent and plate tectonics that split it apart. So you'd think they could just share migration maps with their secular counterparts. But... We would suggest that that's, uh, the, the division of the physical division of continental plates would probably have taken place in the first couple of days, the first 45 days or so of the, of the flood. Since the creationist model has the land masses separating during the flood, that doesn't actually help our kangaroo situation. But what we don't see is we don't see a sort of set of uh, kangaroo fossils going from Ararat all the way to Australia. But right. should we expect that? No, we shouldn't. Well, that depends on what you mean by expect. If your claim is kangaroos migrated from the Middle East to Australia, then certainly a prediction of your model would have to be that you would expect fossils of kangaroos might one day be found on the path. Even if we haven't found any yet, it would have to be a prediction of the model that we might. The very fact that we have fossils is indication of something catastrophic taking place because an animal or plant has to be buried in order to be fossilized. Yes, so fossilization is a rare process and you can't therefore say, well, I expect to find these fossils in these different places. Scientists completely agree that fossilization is a rare process that requires some kind of relatively rapid burial of a specimen. This is a great explanation as to why such fossils might not yet have been found or potentially not even exist if those kangaroos booked it at top speed but a rational reason none have been found yet does not negate the fact that this flood model would predict the existence of such. The bison that were killed in the West, and there's, there's, hard, there's basically zero evidence now that all of those buffalo were killed. I don't think that's true. I mean, the Smithsonian has actual photographic evidence of the bison slaughter. And there are many artifacts of Native American culture that were crafted from bison bones and skin. If Eric means fossil evidence of the specific slaughter, we know that the 19th century hunters had uses for every part of the dead bison. They weren't leaving them behind to become fossils. Interestingly though, there is a notable fossil record of bison through the Ice Age 10 to 15,000 years ago, and their migration from Siberia to Alaska some 200,000 years ago. Take those secular year assumptions aside, we still have plenty of bison fossils to tell us how they got here in presumably the same post-flood time frame. We have similar records for the spread of mammoths, horses, crocodiles, lions, and most other modern species, though the epicenters don't seem to be the Middle East. If these fossils mark post-flood paths, is it so unreasonable to look for that one kangaroo fossil? Just one? It would go a long way. What makes sense to me is uh, somebody putting them on a, on a boat and taking them over there. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense to me, because you yes. got to think it couldn't have been but uh, a little while after the flood that people were beginning already to, to venture out and sail around and do things like that. So Sure. If we ignore the fossil evidence of marsupials living in Australia long before the Australian Aboriginals, most creationists would say that the humans weren't scattered far until after the events of the Tower of Babel, so the kangaroos would have had to have stayed in the Middle East local until then, which again leads to the expectations of fossil evidence. Uh, I, it, it can make sense is the bottom line. Yes. And I guess that's it, isn't it? You're not looking for the best conclusion from the evidence at hand. You're not looking for the most probable explanation. You're merely looking to make your presupposed conclusions give the surface appearance of making some sense. That is the lowest scientific standard I've ever heard of. My bottom line is, is the claim true? Does the claim conform to reality? If you haven't already, why not click subscribe to be notified when new Pologia videos come out. And you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Pologia Zero. Thanks for watching. Later.